Let's talk about the difficulties of those missions. Now, how high are the Himalayas? Well, the Himalaya range that we would fly over in northern Burma were from 14 to 20,000 feet. And they covered us width of uh, maybe 100 miles. But then if we ran into bad weather, uh, that could uh, be doubled or something. And then from uh, where the ATC flew their missions from Chaba and Jorhat to over to Kunming and Chongqing in China, uh, they flew maybe five, six hundred miles. But we flew 80 miles from 80 miles west of Calcutta on up to the Chengdu area, which so we were flying 1,200 miles. And how long did that take? Well, uh, uh, we weren't doing 200 miles an hour, so we were always hoped that we could do it in a six-hour one-way trip. Hmm. And then uh, we might have to stay over a day or two or w to fix the planes because they, they didn't always work just right. And so uh, it might be two, three days before we'd get back. Mm -hmm. But in actual, from, from taking off in India to China was about... Well, we... we uh, on a typical day, without, say, without storms and... And, and problems, how long the flight was it? Well, it took about six hours because, as so, yeah. we mentioned, we never flew over 200 miles an hour because we were flying piston engines. A lot different now are these jets. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, gee, you can fly from San Diego up here in, in an hour and a half, and in those days it would take us six hours. Six hours. And that was, um, you had a lot of different problems with that because... Um, Sometimes your planes were not working well. They, the B-29s had been um, assembled very quickly in the factories, and no two B-29s were the same, and you were not able to get equipment in to repair them. Uh, a lot of problems went on with those planes, so weren't you many times flying with not enough engines? Well, and those engines that we had were right engines, and they built them by taking a bank of nine cylinder engines and adding another one a bank of nine so that made an 18 cylinder engine but they were always overheating the uh, manufacturers thought they could save weight which was always a problem and they started using aluminum and magnesium but those burnt real easy and so we often had fires catch on and to begin with, the design for the cow flaps was that they were long and to uh, protect the air in around the engine, but then it created heating problems. And so eventually we cut them down or even cut them out completely. But when we had a problem and had to get a repair or a part from the United States, it took us over a week to get the, the thing. So a lot of times we were making just little homemade uh, mm -hmm. things and repairs in China so or you, India. So you were flying planes that were not in, in top condition <laughs> over over these high mountains. Right. And um, I know that some of the planes, uh, the cargo planes, were not able to fly as high as the B-29s, but you could actually fly over the top of the Himalayas. The B-29s could Yes, and yet uh, a lot of those um, cumulonimbus and uh, heavy weather, the, the terrible storms, they, they could go up to 40,000 feet. And we did, we, we rarely flew over 25,000 feet, but anything over about uh, 17, 18,000, you ran into ice, a lot of ice. And the more ice that built up on the plane, the, the heavier it got and the slower it got, and that created real problems. And the winds... Uh, were, were real bad and in fact uh, most of the year we had to fly in weather when we bounced around in fact we had even some of our planes were flipped upside down from the wind mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you had all this ice and that put even more pressure on the engines didn't it right the ice and then the heavy wind so if you ran into a heavy wind, then it would take more than six hours, I suppose, to make your crossing. Well, it's, it's sort of strange on, on weather. 
Um, most of the winds were coming from the west or southwest, like the Indian Ocean, and then when they hit the higher rugged peaks and mountains in the Himalaya range, then uh, it caused them to do all kinds of weird things, might change directions completely. And at that time, we didn't know about the jet stream at all. I mean, we found that, my golly, sometimes we were flying 100 miles an hour faster, or we might be going much, much slower, uh, it, it depending on the elevation we were and uh, where the winds were coming from. So you didn't technically know all that. You just had to figure we it had out. To, we, we were just a bunch of air. people learning how to fly the airplane, and we it, it was a new airplane. So we were even trying to prove that it would fly and would mm -hmm. go on missions. Mm -hmm. And wasn't there a lot of? Uh, I've heard of the soup. Uh, now was it always foggy and and misty over the Himalayas? Where well, it depended upon the time of the year, Marilyn. Um, the best time of the year over the hump when you might see the mountains and things uh, was like in the fall. And the worst time of the year would be in the uh, late spring, say from March until summer. And by the summer, you were running into the monsoons, and that's when we get heavy rains. Sometimes 20 inches in, in a day. We might not even get 20 inches in a year here in this part of California.